ഓക്കെ നൗ വി വിൽ സി അനദർ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് ടോപ്പിക് മോർഫോളജിക്കൽ അനാലിസിസ് ആൻഡ് ലെക്സിക്കൺ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഹൗ മോർഫോളജിക്കൽ അനാലിസിസ് ക്യാൻ ഹെൽപ്പ് ഇൻ ലെക്സിക്കൺ ഡിസൈൻ വി ഹാവ് ഓൾറെഡി കവേർഡ് എ സ്മോൾ പോർഷൻ ഓഫ് ദിസ് വൈൽഡ് സ്റ്റഡിങ് എഫ് എസ് ടി റൈറ്റ് ഫൈനാറ്റ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ആൻസ്റ്റിറ്റ്യൂസേഴ്സ് നൗ വി വിൽ അപ്ലൈ എഫ് എസ് ടി അലോങ് വിത്ത് അവർ ഓഗുമെൻറ്റഡ് ഗ്രാമർ ഇൻ ഓർഡർ ടു make the lexicon design efficient that's what that, uh, that's what we are going to see so uh, as you know lexicon is our vocabulary and uh, we can imagine uh, how vast vocabulary for language can be and it's not efficient to store the entire word set of a language in vocabulary as it can be a tedious search task so uh, what uh, you usually have is a word like say want right and you have various inflections of want like uh, you have wanted or you have wanting or you have wants something like that and what are inflections inflections are um, formed by suffixing some letters at the end of a word okay so the base form that is want along with the inflections are taken and most probably the base form will be kept in lexicon and inflections will be derived through some algorithm or program so that's how you can efficiently reduce the entries in lexicon okay so we will see how and uh, this uh, inflection forms of want is taken from this website conjugatorreverse.net you can refer for other inflection forms also and uh, if you remember uh, this is an fst uh, that help you to recognize inflection forms of a word okay so here the my area marked red it shows uh, a word t i t i e and what does this entire area show it shows t i e s so it means that uh, if you can recognize tai you can recognize tai is also okay so uh, this fst can just show you that both tai and tais are valid words of your language but the main problem with this fst is it can't tell you what tai is and what tais are that is uh, the different grammatical difference between them or where and when they can be used okay so for that info we may need to add some uh, production rules telling our ties fits and where tie fits okay so what can this fst do this fst suppose it is given ties it can split uh, that ties into tie and yes okay yes as separate and tie as separate and it can help you to search tie from the lexicon and uh, using cfg rules we can find out where tie es can be used okay so uh, here we are bringing uh, that methodology into context here the word taken is wants which is an inflected form of want w a n t so as first step as i told you you will give this wants to fst finite state transducer which will split wants or the inflected form wants into the base form want and yes okay most probably want will be available in lexicon because it is the basic form right and suppose that this is the lexicon entry of want okay so this lexicon entry basically says that want is a base form base verb right then uh, in the next step uh, using this lexical entry that we got from steps 2 we will check all the cfg rules which have uh, the this constant that we got from lexical entry as the right the right side part okay so here we have got a matching rule right and if you see this rule um, uh the these things root sub category etc variables which we will fill from the lexical entry want and the verb form base is exactly the same as here okay and so we will uh, have a want here or we will substitute the um, constant or want we got from lexicon here and here it is shown as a pluses right so it means uh, want pluses is the right hand side production of this cfg rule 
okay so once we substitute this constant want here what happens it means that uh, wants right that is want plus s is actually a precedence verb form of your uh, basic form want okay so in effect we have got the final information regarding wants right that is wants or the inflected form of want is a precedence form of want okay so this uh, info we want have got from fst alone right fst will help you to just split it into components and it will give you like that but here as we had annotated cfg rule it gave us the information that wants is actually the presentence form of want okay so this is the final constant that we got for wants okay so what is the final constant of wants or what is the final derivation we got for wants uh, we came to understood that wants is a presentence form of want okay and it can be third person singular or its use can be in third person singular so um, these two shots are taken from your textbook that is natural language understanding by allen and uh, figure 4.6 this figure shows a sample lexicon and uh, grammar 6 4.5 this figure shows some cfg rules which will identify the inflected forms of these lexicon entries okay and we will see how it works through one example so this is a very simple example in this example the sentence is the saw was broken okay and in this example we will first see how lexicon alone can help us to identify constituents of our sentence so we have the first word as the right the obviously has a lexicon entry and it, sell, it says that the is an article so it is a proper form or it is a proper part of the sentence then we will see the case of saw okay and uh, when we take the case of saw we have we have got three lexicon entries for saw and if we go by order we will take the first lexicon entry and see that and we observe that that saw is a noun and it is third person singular and it exactly fits our case right uh, we are talking about a thing that is not a speaker or listener and it is a noun so it exactly fits the meaning of this sentence okay now uh, what we are left with now we are left with was right so we will take the case of was and we will check whether any lexical entry lexicon entries are present for was and we got one but uh, the curious case of that lexical lexicon entry is uh, it says that the root form of was is b and was is the past tense form of b okay and can be used in third person singular also so again was fits the case of our sentence and this phrase is a good part of the sentence okay so we were able to derive all this information from feature complemented lexicon okay the lexicon entries were features are present it gave us all this information now we will see how cfgs can give an extra bit of information that is not obvious from lexicon okay for that we will take the example of an inflection form seen s w e n you know that seen and is an inflected form of c right you will add e n to the end of c and you will get the inflected form seen actually it is a past participle of c you can get the other inflected forms of c from again conjugator.reverso.net website and i recommend you to see that now coming back to how scene is processed by lexicon as well as the grammar we will again first pass scene through fst so what will fst give you fst will give you the base form c and the inflection we added to the end that is en now we will look up for the lexicon entry for c when we take up the lexicon entry of c we got that it is a verb its root form is c and it is a basic thing or a base form and it has got two binary features and what does this feature tell about c the first one says that it is having an irregular past or it means that uh, c has an irregular past form which can't be easily derived from inflection 
okay and you know the uh, the past tense form of c is so s a w and we can't attach anything to c to get s a w that is why it is that is why it is shown here that the past tense form of c is irregular it can't be derived directly then the next feature of c is that its past participle can be got by attaching an en to c okay or it means that it is it has a past participle form terminating in en okay so these are the information we got from the lexicon uh, but uh, one information we didn't get what was that we didn't get what scene is right or what is the verb form of scene we just got what is the verb form of c now uh, what we will do is uh, we will take up this lexicon entry and search for any grammar whose right hand side part matches with this lexicon entry so uh, when we search through that grammar right that i shown you earlier grammar 4.5 we came or we can see one rule that is rule number five right this rule number five has a past participle form terminating in en and uh, our form is based so these two things are exactly matching with uh, our lexicon entry for c rest are variable so we can substitute the values we got from c right and uh, again uh, for our positive case we have a en at the end of this rule right it means that uh, the base form that satisfies this part that is c plus en is the right hand side of this production file okay so we substitute all the entries we got from the lexicon entry for scene here over here and what we will get ultimately is that c s w -E plus en that is scene is a past participle form okay which is exactly what we observe so without even storing any details about is scene in the lexicon and just storing only the basic features of c and extending that using what augmented cfg we are able to derive almost all the inflections of a particular word or a particular verb form so that is the beauty of using cfgs with lexicon to enhance the efficiency of lexicon